Tonight, we're witnessing what could be the opening salvo of World War III. Iran has launched over 400 hypersonic ballistic missiles at Iran, overwhelming the Iron Dome and striking targets across the country, including Tel Aviv. Israel is preparing to retaliate, and the world is holding its breath. Meanwhile, where is our leadership? Biden and Harris are busy having meetings and issuing weak statements. And this is what happens when you have a non-existent president and an absent vice president, as Trump rightly points out. Now, check this out. Are you listening? With Iran launching missiles at Israel and the threat of World War III looming, our country's national debt has surpassed $35 trillion. We're borrowing just to pay interest, digging a deeper hole. Meanwhile, gold has surpassed $2,400 an ounce as smart money shifts to what the Constitution deems as real money, gold and silver. If you have funds in, an IR, in a low interest account or 401k or IRA, Call Global Gold Investments for their free 2024 Protect Your Wealth and Retirement Guide. The number's on the screen, 888-700-4148. Mention Next News for five-star treatment and a complimentary portfolio analysis. Remember, if you don't have gold, you don't have wealth. Okay, let's jump right into this because this is all breaking right now, real time. Uh, let's just jump right into uh, Netanyahu's remarks. Uh, he said, Iran made a big mistake tonight. This is just a few moments ago. Citizens of Israel... I begin by sending condolences to the families of the victims of the heinous attack in Jaffa and wishing a full recovery to the injured. Just like in the missile attack, there is a guiding and murderous hand behind this attack as well. It comes from Tehran. This evening, Iran once again attacked Israel with hundreds of missiles. This attack failed. It was thwarted thanks to Israel's air defense system, which is the most advanced in the world. And I commend the IDF for this impressive achievement. It was also thwarted thanks to the vigilance and responsibility you, citizens of Israel, have shown. And I also thank the US for its support in our defense effort. Iran made a big mistake this evening and it will pay for it. The regime in Iran does not understand our determination to defend ourselves and our resolve to retaliate against our enemies. Sinwar and Daif did not understand this. Nasrallah and Mosan did not understand this. And apparently there are those in Tehran who do not understand this. They will understand. We will stand by the principle we set. Whoever attacks us, we attack them. This is true everywhere we fight the axis of evil. This is true for Judea and Samaria. This is true for Gaza, for Lebanon, for Yemen, for Syria. And this is also true for Iran. We fight the axis of evil everywhere, including our heroic soldiers who are now operating in southern Lebanon and in Gaza. Today, more than ever, the forces of light in the world must unite and act together against the dark regime of the Ayatollahs, which is the source of terror and evil in our region. They must stand with Israel. The choice has never been clearer between tyranny and freedom, between blessing and curse. On the eve of Rosh Hashanah, I tell you, citizens of Israel, Israel is on the rise. The axis of evil is in retreat. We will do whatever it takes to continue this trend, achieve all war objectives, foremost among them, the return of all our captives, and to ensure our existence and our future. A good and open year to all of you, warmly. Oh, that message was just released. We've also got the uh, Sullivan uh, giving a press conference at the White House. Uh, President Biden says he fully supports Israel, spent part of the day in the Situation Room, part of the day. World War II, uh, World War III is on uh, the brink, and he's um, spending part of the day there. Uh, of course, uh, the, the rhetoric that we've been hearing for years is that Trump is going to lead us into World War III. Here's a post. This, goes, this is Politico back in 2017. Trump leading the U.S. on a path to World War III, well, we can clearly see that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have brought us to the brink of World War III. On the eve of an election, on October 1st, is this the October surprise? Who knows? Certainly could be. <sighs> Eric Trump, Democrats, you have effectively put the U.S. and the rest of the world into World War III. This was just... Uh, in November of 23, this was stated. World War III looms as U.S. election nears. Our enemies know there is no one running this country right now. As Democrats kicked out Biden in a political coup, clueless Kamala can't even deal with deadly flooding in North Carolina. 
much less World War III. America and the world needs Trump. The times demand it. Donald Trump issuing a statement that the world is on fire and spiraling out of control. We have no leadership, no one running the country. We have a non-existent president and Joe Biden and a completely absent vice president, Kamala Harris, who is too busy fundraising in San Francisco, a city which she and Gavin Newsom totally destroyed and staging fake photo ops. No one is in charge, and it's not even clear who is more confused, Biden or Kamala. Neither has any idea what is even going on. When I was president, Iran was in total check. They were starved for cash, fully contained and desperate to make a deal. Kamala flooded them with American cash. And ever since, they've been exporting, exporting terror all over and unraveling the Middle East. Under President Trump, we had no war in the Middle East, no war in Europe, in harmony in Asia, no inflation, no Afghanistan catastrophe. Instead, we had peace. Now war or the threat of war is raging everywhere, and the two incompetents running this country are leading us to the brink of World War III. You wouldn't trust Joe or Kamala to run a lemonade stand, let alone lead the free world. It's no surprise that Iran desperately wants Kamala Harris to be president because they know as long as she is in power, they can take advantage of America. This is why they've tried to target me. If I was in charge, October 7th never happens. Russia, Ukraine never happens. Afghanistan, botch withdrawal never happens. And inflation never happens. If I win, we'll have peace in the world again. If Kamala gets four more years, the world goes up in smoke. And we are witnessing that right now. Let's take a look at uh, what Sullivan said. To help. Thank you, Corrine, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to provide a brief report on the Iranian ballistic missile attack against Israel that occurred earlier today. I can take just a few questions because this is an ongoing situation and I need to get back to my desk. Today, Iran launched nearly 200 ballistic missiles towards targets in Israel. The United States military coordinated closely with the Israeli Defense Forces to help defend Israel against this attack. U.S. naval destroyers joined Israeli air defense units in firing interceptors to shoot down inbound missiles. President Biden and Vice President Harris monitored the attack and the response from the White House Situation Room, joined in person and remotely by their national security team. We are still working with the IDF and the authorities in Israel to assess the impact of the attack. But at this time, and I stress at this time, we do not know of any deaths in Israel. We are tracking the reported death of a Palestinian civilian in Jericho in the West Bank. We do not know of any damage to aircraft or strategic military assets in Israel. In short, based on what we know at this point, this attack appears to have been defeated and ineffective. This was first and foremost the result of the professionalism of the IDF but in no small part because of the skilled work of the U.S. military and meticulous joint planning in anticipation of the attack. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you some video that contradicts what he's saying. Now, the Israelis have the Iron Dome. I mean, it's a very effective defense against these types of attacks. But when you have, what, 200 to 400 ballistic missiles raining down at one time, there are plenty that will get through. And I'm going to show you the video that is, I mean, dozens of videos. But let's continue with this guy. We're also aware of reports of a terrorist attack in Jaffa that took the lives of a number of Israeli civilians and wounded several others today. Our condolences go out to the families of the victims and to the family of the Palestinian civilian in Jericho. Obviously, my update here is based on early reports and we reserve the right to amend and adjust as necessary as we gather more You're information. The word fog of war was invented for a situation like this. This is a fluid situation. We will consult with the Israelis on next steps in terms of the response and uh, how to deal with what Iran has just done, and we will continue to monitor for further threats and attacks from Iran and its proxies. We are particularly focused on protecting U.S. service members in the region. And with that, I'll take just a few questions. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, they're going to have to amend that for sure. Now, before I get to some of the um, previous rhetoric from the left, I'm going to show you some of this footage now. Obviously, like, here, here you go. These are the guys who are signing bombs 
meant for Ukraine. These are the warmongers that want to drive us deeper into war. Trump is leading Kamala, so they need to hurry up and start World War III. Biden will resign and Kamala will be president. That is a theory that's been floating around. Kamala Harris is allowing World War III to start. Harris and Biden will be blamed for World War III. Biden and Harris are leading the world into World War III. Our servicemen and women are being shipped off to a bloody Middle East once again. <clears throat> Take a look at this video. Of, this is the video of the Iranian ballistic missile launch. Now, I got word of this. A friend of mine called me immediately and said, turn on the news right now. And uh, immediately went to X. Thank you, Tom, for that message. <laughs> Whenever Tom calls me during the day, it's never a good thing. <laughs> He's always got something crazy to tell me. And this is what we're seeing. Here is more. Look at these. Look at this shot. <laughs> That's just that's just one angle. Only Trump can stop World War III. Five hours ago, Biden said this morning, VP and I convened our national security team to discuss Iranian plans to launch an imminent attack against Israel. We discussed how the U.S. is prepared to help Israel defend against these attacks and protect American personnel in the region. They would all rather have World War III than a Trump win in November, or maybe they all want World War III because Trump is going to win in November, right? The October surprise. All Israeli civilians are in bomb shelters as rockets from Iran are fired at Israel. I saw this map circulating and it was terrifying. Here you can see, it looks like the Iron Dome is failing. Look at this shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One after another. One after another, missiles raining down. Here's one. A hundred. This. Look at this shot. Have to see what's happened here. 102 rockets is coming from Iran. The crazy military rockets. We have to see. This is for my house. What's happened? All the world have to see what's happened in our sky now in Israel. This is crazy attack from Iran. Clearly, the Iron Dome is overwhelmed. One after another. Imagine, imagine, imagine that was raining down in your town. How would you respond? World War Three Red Alarm. Prepare for nuclear annihilation. Bum, bum, bum. Who? Bum, bum, bum. Who is... Listen, we just got to pray that cool heads prevail here. But you know that Israel is going to strike back, and they're going to strike back hard. This is a clear, clear declaration of war from Iran on Israel. What are they going to do? And I, I and I, I go back to the the language of the left that we've been hearing for years that Trump is a threat. Trump is going to start World War Three. All this is happening on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's watch. All of the death and destruction around the world is because of the United States weakness from the very top at the Oval Office. The airspace of Israel and Jordan and Iraq are reportedly closed. Here's a shot you can see. OSINT Defender, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran, are preparing to release a statement according to Iranian state media. Look at this. This is first confirmed hit of a residential block in Tel Aviv. A residential 
residential block, man. Pray for these people. Dozens of ballistic missiles seen in the sky. There's dozens of videos like this. <clears throat> Remember this moment from the debate? I said, but after I left, when I saw him building up soldiers, he did it after I left. I said, oh, he must be negotiating. It must be a good, strong point of negotiation. Well, it wasn't because Biden had no idea how to talk to him. He had no idea how to stop it. And now you have millions of people dead and it's only getting worse and it could lead to World War Three. Don't kid yourself, David. We're playing with World War Three, and we have a president that we don't even know if he's. Where is our president? We don't even know if he's a president. And, and just to clarify they here. They threw him out of a campaign like a dog. We don't even know. Is he our president? But we. Yeah. Other areas in Israel are being hit with missiles, not just Tel Aviv. The IRGC launched at least 250. This is the response to the assassination of Hania and Nasrallah. Iran has said if Israel retaliates, there will be more attacks. Not only dumb and here's here's Donald Trump again on World War Three. He's been warning about this for for months, years. Oh, Biden is not only dumb and incompetent. I believe that he has gone mad, a stark raving lunatic with his horrible and country threatening environmental open borders and DOJ FBI weaponization policies. He is a mental catastrophe that is leading our country to hell will end up in World War III because of this man and for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, terror attack in Israel. Let's take a look at the uh, Fox. Near to the border. city of Tel Aviv in Jaffa that sits just to the south of Israel's second largest city, there has been a terror attack. Multiple people shot. First responders are currently on the scene and initial reports indicate that there were two gunmen involved. We're gathering more information about this shooting attack in real time, but I can tell you that the location it took place is a very populated, popular area next to cafes and restaurants. And there are videos circulating online that we will not show here on television that appear to show many bodies next to a light rail station. This is a station that was actually newly built in an area where many young people in Jaffa and Tel Aviv like to hang out quite close to the beach and an indication that the security situation right now across Israel continues to deteriorate as the country is not only bracing for a possible ballistic missile attack from Iran earlier today, people heading to shelters after a rocket attack coming from Lebanon, the Iran back group Hezbollah there. And now this developing news out of. So there was a, there was a, a an active shooter situation. I believe the terror, terror attack at the same time, these ballistic missiles were being launched. Here's President Trump the again. The country before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, it's we. I will have the horrible war. That's right. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine totally settled. I will settle it, and I will. Pre I, and I'm the only one that can say this because these other people have no clue. I will prevent World War III. So what happens? What happens? Israel is going to counter. They are going to launch something. They're going to they're going to strike deep into Iran. Will they use nukes? I certainly hope not. But if that attack has serious teeth, Russia is going to come to the aid of Iran, even more so. Last night, as I was browsing the news wires, I saw that Vladimir Putin had an emergency meeting at the Kremlin. This was last night. This was before this attack. So obviously he was being briefed about what was about to take place today, just hours ago. Maggie Speak says what's really disgusting is the Biden administration gave Iran billions in the past four years, enabling them to attack Israel like this. We're going to get dragged into World War III because Biden-Harris blinking diplomacy doesn't work. When will they learn? 
The U.S. Embassy in Israel issued a high-level alert to its employees in Palestinian territories, instructing them to return home to be prepared to enter the bomb shelters. That was just four hours ago. Again, Donald Trump, another warning. Uh, very serious. We are in very, very grave danger of having a World War III. And this will be a war. This will be a war of obliteration. This will not be a war with, I say, army tanks going back and forth, shooting at each other. This is the real deal. And we have a man that uh, he, he can't even walk off a stage. He walks off. Donald Trump's been warning about this. In response to the, this is the IRGC official statement. In response to the martyrdom of martyr Haniyah and Sayed Hassan Nasala and martyr Nil Roshin, we targeted the heart of occupied lands. As the regime reacts to Iran's operation, it will be hit with a crushing attack. U.S. Embassy in Israel has directed all U.S. government employees and their family members to shelter in place until further notice the U.S. Embassy in Israel. Remember, the Democrats did everything to start World War III despite attempts to, desperate attempts to remain in power. Five hours ago, World War III looms as U.S. elections near. Let me, I'm going to play this clip. This is a, a, a quick clip from Eric Trump. It's about election. And you know what's really amazing? We got to listen to Hillary Clinton for years. Donald Trump doesn't know anything about foreign policy. He doesn't... General, you remember that? Donald Trump is a very unstable man. He can't have his finger on the, the nuclear button. He doesn't know about the complexity of foreign policy. Hey, good job, Hillary. Good job, Democrats, with foreign policy. You effectively put the United States and the rest of the world into World War III. That's what they've done. And you know, it's actually interesting. It's actually my father's personality, which is extremely tough, that's kept the world out of wars. Ain't that the truth? Because they're afraid of Donald Trump, they're not going to act. But you got this guy who doesn't even know how to tie his shoes. You got Kamala Harris stringing word salads together all day long. And we are on the brink. Donald Trump just releasing this ad. He invaded. Like us, China also saw their weakness. So did Putin. Then he invaded Ukraine. Hamas saw Harris' anti-Israel statements and will use it as a green light to keep murdering Israelis. And Iran thinks Harris is so incompetent, new intel shows they're trying to help Harris win the election. America doesn't need another TikTok performer. We need the strength that will protect us. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. Like us. We don't need another TikTok star. We're going to keep monitoring this, bring you the latest. Make sure you follow us on X for um, all the information we can share with you. So as missiles rain down on Israel and the threat of a wider conflict, World War III on the horizon, we're all left wondering, where's America's leadership? President Trump warned us that Biden and Harris would lead us into World War III, and now we're watching it unfold in real time. The question is, how much worse will it get before we see real action? What do you think America's response should be to this crisis? Say a prayer for peace in the world and for everyone affected and share your comments in the in the comments below